In ArcGIS Pro 1.4, we've introduced a new color scheme called Dark Theme. Dark Theme is built on top of the original framework with the same goal to help you create beautiful, powerful maps. The dark background and reduced visual contrast helps with eye strain and fatigue during extended workflows and eases visibility in dimly lit environments. Animations now have a timeline pane and overlay so you can add titles, dynamic text for dates, times, and ranges to your videos. We've also done some work on time zones. So even though it's 5 o'clock somewhere, it's not 5 o'clock everywhere, and now each layer can have its own time zone. For range, you can now set aliases for more useful names than just numbers and text. A new addition to the editor at 1.4 is the reference grid. The grid is intended to help you draw features parallel and perpendicular from each other more efficiently. You can configure the map by setting its origin, rotation, and spacing so it aligns to the layers you are working with. You can also change its appearance and style to suit your map display. When drawing, you can snap to the grid's intersections and always know the distance of your line segment. You can also use its inference feature when offset from the grid to save time and clicks. You can now edit multi-patches either by creating new 3D geometries from scratch or by editing existing ones. Numerous workflows are now supported, such as working with existing 2D data, third-party models, last data sets, rule packages, etc. This is part of our continued effort to make 3D easy and for everyone. You can use ArcGIS Pro to create and administer your database topology. The new topology layer uses simple feature layers. Use the Fix Error tool to better understand the rule, and then fix the error using a predefined fix method. With Map Topology, you can maintain your topological integrity by using the new Error Inspector to explore multiple errors. From the Fix tab, you can fix multiple selected errors from the list of available fixes. Proportional symbols can be defined by setting up the fields, units, and data they represent, as well as the minimum and maximum size. You can define display filters to filter features by scale. By zooming into the LA area, you can now see all of the major cities. You can also vary symbology by attributes by setting the transparency, rotation, color, and size. Victor tiles now have an integrated sharing experience. You can now upload and publish more efficiently. Notice this web map is not in Web Mercator. You can now publish and view vector tiles in any projection that ArcGIS supports. You can also print and export vector tiles. Here is an export to PDF. Notice that the content remains vector throughout. And yeah, any projection that ArcGIS supports. Charts can be used to visually summarize your data. You can now focus on areas of interest with the new filter by selection functionality and sort your charts alphabetically or by value. Filter by selection can also be used as a way to zoom into a chart and take a closer look at interesting relationships. New formatting capabilities allow you to rename, reorder, and select colors for multi-series charts. And now charts can be exported as SVGs. You can add your SVG to a layout or open it in Illustrator and further customize your chart's design. Also with this release, we've introduced a profile graph, a type of chart used to look at variation and height along 3D linear features. Use the Layer Context menu to create a graph and then change properties like the unit of measure, title, and axis labels. You can also view both the map and the graph simultaneously. You can select features in the graph and see the corresponding features light up in the map. You can also filter the chart based on selection and take measurements of the features in the chart using your mouse. Layouts now have the ability to include graticules in your map frames. 
With GradCules, you also have the option to automatically adjust the interval of your grid lines and ticks. So even if you change the scale of your map, you will get an appropriate GradCule. There are also some big advancements with Legends. One of our top enhancement requests was for Dynamic Legends. You now have the option to only show features that appear in the current extent. This works great with dynamic maps such as Map Series, where each page can have its own extent. Python toolboxes are now encrypted, and Python 3.5 includes asynchronous patterns in new modules like requests. You can now manage Python packages from within Pro. Backed by the industry standard conduct, you can easily install thousands of packages to extend the software. Here the machine learning package scikit-learn has been installed and used to build a species distribution model. With just a couple of clicks, you can install and use the ArcGIS Python API for interactive computing. An important addition to Python Map Automation, or ArcPyMP, is extending the API to provide access to layer symbology. For example, with only a few lines of code, you can change the capital city's render for single symbol to unique value. You can also modify individual symbols and change various properties of their size and color. You can also change the state's layer to use the graduated colors render and set the fill colors to be 50% transparent. Arcade is the new expression language for the ArcGIS platform. In this map, grid and monthly wind data has been drawn by direction and magnitude. The magnitude was drawn by using this expression in the graduated color symbology. The rotation used another expression for the rotation parameter of the symbology. This looks great in ArcGIS Pro, but one of the benefits of Arcade is that we can share it with the ArcGIS platform. You can see here that the JavaScript API can draw this using the same expressions and produce the same result. In this task first step, the user is required to enter a work order ID that is stored as a task variable. Here the user is presented with a step palette to create new buildings or reshape, replace, or remove existing building footprints. These can be done in any order and as many times as needed. The last step is selecting all the created and modified features and prevents the user from proceeding by verifying the user input. Additionally, the work order ID from step 1 was automatically applied to those features. Finally, the average duration can be displayed when using task history. Configurations provide the ability to customize Pro with custom splash screens, start pages, and branding. This is the template stock custom start page being used to open a project. Now here is a second custom start page displaying the specific projects you can open. Here's another custom start page which allows the user to open a project based on a specific area of work. Configurations can provide you with a streamlined interface used for a specific solution and allow you to tailor Pro based off of user login and custom roles. Reviewer rules are validation methods that assess different aspects of a feature's quality. This can include a feature's attribution, its geometric integrity, and spatial relationships with other features. Reviewer rules are stored in your map and are shareable in project templates and packages as well as map and layer files. Identifying errors in your data is a single click operation. Features that fail validation are automatically stored as an error result in your geodatabase to expedite corrective workflows. Start using Workflow Manager faster by configuring users with groups. Use new functionality such as delete job and filtering. The new job view provides step help and job notes for job context. Configure a parent job or create a job data version easily. Add and remove old dependencies to suspend work and simplify productivity using the workflow pane so users can immediately start executing their work and when complete, seamlessly move on to the next job. At 1.4, a contextual tab has been added to give you quick access to the tools common to working with CAD data. These tools include an interactive georeferencing experience. Here you can quickly pull data into the map view and interactively nudge it into place, and or adjust the drawing to exact coordinates by snapping to CAD geometry in the map. This adjustment information is saved with the drawing for any future use in ArcGIS.
In addition to the regular tools inside a project toolbox, Data Interoperability has a workbench application as an available command on the Analysis tab. Ad hoc workflows can be authored from scratch, or if you have them, you can leverage pre-existing WMF files. Once you've transformed your data into ArcGIS, it's data like anything else. In this case, it's points and tables used to make geocoding locators that have been published to server for the entire country of Australia. These points represent shaking intensity immediately following the earthquake in Japan in 2011. Using the geostatistical wizard in Ordinary Krieging, we can see the semiovarigram that models the spatial relationships between the pairs of points. We can get a preview of what the surface will look like, and lots of diagnostic information on how well the data actually fits the model. Click Finish and we can see the geostatistical layer and where we can predict values at new locations. In ArcGIS Pro, you can easily share web maps using predefined configurations for exploratory mapping, editing, and visualization. You can also publish individual web layers as building blocks for web maps by publishing feature vector tile, tile, and dynamic or cache map image layers. You can also use the Create Scene Layer Package tool, upload them to either online or your portal, and then create beautiful 3D scenes. Create Enterprise Geodatabase and Folder Connections to access content for your project, or search your portal for layers that you can add to your map for editing. You can also browse the Living Atlas for layers such as this image service which you can browse into and grab one of its sublayers and add it to your map for viewing. You can also preview maps such as this one and then create thumbnails for its metadata. The ArcGIS desktop product pages are now redesigned to put the focus on ArcGIS Pro. The resources page is a showcase of some of the best content available for learning how to use ArcGIS Pro. It consolidates books, exercises from ArcGIS Learn, courses from Esri Training, and tutorials to help you get started using the most essential functionality. Authors wrote over 300 new topics and updated over 650 to help you learn about everything you've seen in this video.